Okay, so I'm going to have a look at a few uh, calculus questions just been added to the IGCSE Cambridge exam, also on the IGCSE uh, Edexcel as well. Um, here we go, this, this is the new content that's just been added to the Cambridge exam. It's the idea of understanding uh, derivative, simple derivatives, uh, gradients and turning points, discriminate between, discriminate between maximum and minimum points. Uh, I'll use the second differential test uh, where necessary, which is this one here. Okay, so I will come back to that one later. Uh, here's the first question. Uh, this is quite a tough question. Uh, the first part's definitely A star, um, which basically says this. Show that the area A of the quadrilateral PQRS is given by the formula A equals 2x squared minus 18x plus 80. Okay, so whenever you get this kind of question, um, try to kind of sketch or kind of colour in to kind of show yourself what's happening. Basically, I know the, the, the big area of this rectangle is 8 times 10, and then if I take away the area of these four red triangles, what is going to be left is uh, PQRS. Um, so I actually write that down. You know, you, there might be a method mark just for kind of showing the examiner that you know what to do. So I'm going to start by saying PQRS, area of the rectangle, take away area of the triangles. My next step is, well, the easy bit is to say, well, I know what the area of the rectangle is. Again, let's just write that down. Make sure you, you get any marks that are possibly going. Area of the rectangle is 10 times 8. Area of the triangles, this is a bit more tricky. Uh, I know that this total length here is 8, and this is x. Therefore, this missing length here is 8 minus x. Equally, this long length here is 10. This is x, so therefore, this is 10 minus x. And then the same on this side. If that is 8, and that's x. 8 minus x and 10 minus x. So now I've got enough to actually work out the area of each of these triangles. Now triangle 1 is going to be base times height divided by 2, so 8 minus x times x divided by 2. And then there's another one here. This is 10 minus x times x divided by 2, and 10 minus x times x divided by 2. So those are the four triangles. So I've written out that step there. So the area of the rectangle take away those four areas of the triangles. Okay, now you've got that. Uh, you'll notice they simplify. We've got two, you know, a half of this and a half of this. We've got one of this thing. So we've got one lot of 8 minus x times x. And we've got a half of this thing and a half of this thing. Therefore, we've got one lot of this thing. So we've got one lot of 10 minus x times x. Okay, and we're getting closer to finishing now. Expand out your brackets. 8 times x minus x times x gives us 8x minus x squared. Same again on this one. I get 10x minus x squared. The only thing left... Well, I can simplify it first. I've got an 8x and a 10x, 18x. Minus x squared minus x squared is minus 2x squared. Just the final step is just to be careful with the negative. Uh, I'm taking away all of this thing. So I'm taking away 18x and I'm taking away negative 2x squared. So I get positive 2x squared. That last step is probably the most likely that people might make a mistake on. But you are given what the answer is going to be. So hopefully you can kind of spot if you do make a mistake on that one. Okay, that's actually the, the hard part of the question. The rest of the, the question isn't so difficult. Uh, now we've worked out what this area is. It now says find dA by dx. Just differentiate the function. So I use the, the rules of differentiation. Bring the power down, reduce the power by 1. That gives me 4x minus 18x just differentiates to minus 18. That's it, finished. Um, find the value of x when it's a minimum. Again, it's worth writing this down in the exam. Minimum if dA by dx is 0. So whenever you have a maximum or a minimum, the gradient is 0. So write it down and then say, well, in that case, 4x minus 18 must be equal to 0. Rearrange it. 4x is equal to 18. Therefore, x is equal to 4.5. Okay, and then the last one, explain how you know it's a minimum. Um, I think the second differential test is the easiest one. Uh, we basically differentiate again. So if I differentiate this function... Uh, I just get 4. So the second differential is equal to 4. And if I put in 4.5, it doesn't matter every, for every single value of x, the second differential is 4. Therefore, when x is 4.5, the second differential is 4. If the second differential for this value is greater than 0, then it's a minimum. That's it. So that just tells me straight away. So if it's greater than 0, I get a minimum point. Okay, next one. A similar one, maybe a little bit easier. Um, still probably A star question. Um, we've got a, a rectangular a frame, a length x and y. 
and we've been told that the perimeter is 72, and then we would say, well, okay, we've got the next case, show that the area is 36x minus x squared. Um, whenever you've got this kind of question, start by what you've been given. You've been given the perimeter, perimeter is x plus x plus y plus y is equal to 72. Divide everything by 2, I'm going to get x plus y is 36. Now, I'm, I'm rearranging this to get y on its own. So basically, I want to eliminate y in a minute. So I'm going to say that if x plus y is 36, then y on its own is 36 take away x. Okay, the reason I've done that is because if y is the same as 36 minus x, then the area is going to be x times 36 minus x. So the area is x bracket 36 minus x. x times 36, 36x. x times minus x is minus x squared uh, as required. Okay, uh, again, we've done probably the difficult part of the question. We're given what the area is. How do we differentiate? If the area is 36x minus x squared, 36x differentiates to 36 minus x squared. Bring the power down, reduce the power by 1, uh, is minus 2x. Uh, next one, find the maximum value of a. Same idea as before. Again, we'll write it down. Uh, the maximum any maximum minimum the, the gradient is equal to zero therefore 36 minus 2x must be equal to zero therefore 36 is 2x therefore x is 18. Okay next question uh, here we go we've got a function as uh, y rather than a this time but we do the same thing uh, differentiate the function so bring the power down reduce the power by one 3x squared Minus 3x differentiates to minus 3, uh, a constant just disappears. Find the gradient of the curve at the point when x is 4. So this, this is the gradient function. This tells me the gradient at any point. So when x is 4, I basically stick in x is 4 here, and it's going to tell me what the gradient is. So when x is 4, dy by dx is 3 bracket 4 squared take away 3. So the gradient when x is 4 is going to be 45. Okay, next one. Uh, again, same sort of function. I've got a cubic. Differentiate it. Bring the power down. Reduce the power by 1. Minus 2x differentiates to minus 2. The number just disappears. That's the gradient function. So let's find the coordinates of the two points on the curve when the gradient of the curve is 1. Okay, so this is working backwards. This is to say, telling me that the gradient, the gradient is equal to 1, not the x value is equal to 1. So dy by dx is equal to 1. Therefore, I put the 1 here. So I don't put the 1 in here, I put the 1 on this side. So 1 is equal to 12x squared minus 2. I then try and solve this, bring minus 2 on the other side. 3 equals 12x squared, divide by 12, square root. Remember that uh, we get uh, the plus or the minus. So x is equal to plus or minus the root of 1 over 4. So x is equal to plus or minus 0.5. I mean, actually, I haven't finished the question. I, it, it tells me to find the coordinates. Um, I just find the x-coordinate. In order to find the y-coordinate, I would then stick in the x-coordinate back into the original function, and that would tell me the y-value. Okay, so yeah, read the question carefully and make sure you, you finish it off. Uh, you can do that yourselves if you wish. Okay, next one. Um, we're given a graph. Same, similar kind of question, really. I mean, we've got uh, this, again, it's cubic again. Uh, it says, uh, find the coordinates of P. Uh, we use the same logic. We, we know that at this point P, the gradient of the tangent is 0. If you try to draw a tangent here, the gradient would be 0. It's not a great tangent, but you probably get the, kind of get the idea. Um, so at P, the gradient is 0. Uh, so let's differentiate it. So bring the power down, reduce the power by 1. Bring the power down, reduce the power by 1. 4x differentiates 4, the number disappears. There's my gradient. Uh, I know that the gradient is equal to 0, so 0 equals 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. I'm then going to factorise it. I mean, because it's a 3x squared, you could potentially use the quadratic formula. Um, if you're good at factorising, uh, then, then do the factorising method. Uh, I've got a 3x and an x. I look for two numbers that multiply together to give me 4. That's going to be minus 2 and minus 2. They're the ones that are going to give me minus 6x minus 2x, which is minus 8x. So therefore, I'm going to get two solutions, x is either 2 thirds or x equal to 2. I choose the x equals 2 because that's the furthest one along. So this must be the x equals 2 thirds one. Uh, this time I did read the question carefully. When x is 2, uh, I, I was told to find the coordinates. So when x is 2, stick in x is 2 into 
this formula here, the original equation. So y is equal to 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 3. Stick it on your calculator, get y is 3. So the coordinates are 2, 3. Okay, a uh, couple more questions. And uh, this is a tricky one. I mean, it's, it's difficult to know if this is actually going to turn up because it's, it's new to the syllabus. Uh, but I think potentially it could do. Uh, find the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point when x is equal to 2. Okay, when you see tangent, okay, we do this, we do this, we differentiate first. So we, we differentiate dy by dx is 3x squared minus 9. And I'm told when x is 2, so I want to go, well, well, when x is 2, what is the gradient? So when x is 2, stick in 2 into here, 3 times 2 squared, take away 9, is 3. So the gradient of my straight line is 3. Uh, I'll put m equals 3 because I'm going to use y equals mx plus 3 in a, uh, mx plus c in a minute. So the gradient of this, this straight line is 3. And I also need to find, I know the x coordinates, x is 2. When x is 2, what is the y value of the original function? When x is 2, 2 cubed minus 9 times 2 plus 1 gives me minus 9. So the y coordinate is going to be minus 9. Okay, now I've actually got all the information I need. I'm going to use this equation y equals mx plus c. That's the equation of a straight line. I know the y coordinate, I know the x coordinate, I know the m. So all I need to do is find what c is. And I do that by sticking in the values. I know that minus 9 is equal to m is 3, x is 2 plus c. If I rearrange that, I'm going to get c is minus 15. So therefore, my general equation is y equals 3x, because m is 3, minus 15. Okay, so you're kind of combining this idea of finding equations of lines uh, with, with some differentiation as well. And if you want to kind of imagine what that looks like, there we go. Uh, that's my original curve. When x is 2, that's the tangent. So the equation of this tangent, that's literally what I've just found, is y equals 3x minus 15. You can kind of see it's going to cross the graph around about minus 15. Okay, and then the very last question. Uh, find the coordinates of the two turning points. Again, turning points, stationary points, maximum, minimum, all, all the same. We're basically going to be, uh, in this case, finding when the gradient is 0. So... Start by differentiating, I get 3x squared minus 12x. Let's get rid of all this. Um, yeah, write down dy by dx is 0, so therefore 3x squared minus 12x is equal to 0. Make life easy, divide everything by 3. x squared minus 4x is 0. This time, I mean, it's, it's a quadratic, but there's no uh, constant term, so I can just factorize out the x. So I'm going to get x bracket x minus 4 is 0. It's going to have two solutions, one when x is 0, and one when x is 4. Uh, I'm going, then going to have to actually work out what happens for each of these. When x is 0, I need the y coordinate. So when x is 0, stick in x is 0 here. 0 cubed minus 6 times 0 squared plus 16. I get y is 16. So one of the coordinates is 0, 16. When x is 4, 4 cubed minus 6 times 4 squared plus 16 gives me minus 16. Therefore, the second coordinate is 4 minus 16. And then the last one says... Determine whether the turning point is a maximum or a minimum. This is where I'm going to use the second differential test again. So differentiate again. There's my first differential, 3x squared minus 12x. Differentiate again, I'm going to get 6x minus 12. Now I need to stick these values in. When x is 0, I want to see what happens. When x is 0, I stick in 0 into here. I'm going to get negative 12. If the second differential is negative, I have a maximum. Uh, let's check the second point when x is 4. When x is 4, stick it into the second differential. When x is 4, 6 times 4 take away 12 gives me 12. That is greater than 0, therefore I've got a minimum. 